Mike here with Delta. Today we're going to show you how to install Delta's Highcroft shower base, but the process should work for any of Delta's alcove shower bases. Now if you have a corner shower base, we have a separate video for that. Now depending on your situation, we may have some suggestions for framing and plumbing along the way. But keep in mind, building codes are different everywhere, so if there's a task that seems a little bit beyond your abilities, we definitely recommend contracting a professional for some help. Making sure everything is lined up is important, so I just want to quickly confirm that we're all aligned on what level plumb and square means. To check that a surface is level, place the level flat and look for the bubble to be in the centermost part of the lines. I'm sure you've done this before, but just to be sure. You'll also need to check to make sure your walls are plumb. Now the same thing, just using the level vertically for this, making sure the bubble is in between the two lines. Finally, to check that the walls are square, and again, this is important, I'll use a carpenter square and place in the corner where the two walls intersect. If everything is square, the walls will touch the carpenter square flush and evenly along both edges. Okay, so we're all on the same page for checking plumb, level, and square. Now there's a handful of tools that you'll need, so be sure that you have all of the tools listed on screen here or in your instructions. And you're going to need a shower drain assembly. It's not included with this model, so you'll need to get a standard shower drain with a four and a quarter inch strainer. Okay, I think that covers it. Let's get to it. All right, to get started, we're gonna take a couple of measurements to make sure that our shower base fits in our alcove. Our shower base is 30 inches by 60 inches, so I'm gonna use my tape measure here. Make sure I have at least 60 inches along this front. And I do, okay. Now I'm gonna measure the depth to make sure I have at least 30. And I do, okay. Great. Okay, so now we're gonna check to make sure that our walls are square and plumb. Now this is important not only to ensure the correct fit of our shower base, but also to make sure that the wall set or shower surround that we're gonna install a little bit later is gonna fit correctly as well. It's also a perfect opportunity to check to make sure that your stud locations and your framing locations are all in the right spot for whatever wall covering you're gonna use because this is one of your last opportunities to make any final adjustments you may need. So be sure to check the instructions and make sure everything's looking good. Okay, so to check for square, I'm gonna use a carpenter square. I'm gonna be placing it in the back corners of my walls, making sure it's contacting evenly along both edges of the square. I'm gonna check my first corner here, place it tight into the corner, and then just look to make sure that both sides are contacting evenly. All right, that's perfect. Check the other side. All right, that's perfect as well. Okay, now we're gonna check to make sure our walls are plumb. So I have my level here, and I'm gonna hold it vertically against the studs, making sure that the bubble is in the centermost part of the lines. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna do this to each one of these studs, making sure that every single one is plumb. Then I'm gonna take my level and come down to our subfloor. Make sure our floor is flat and level. Okay, that looks good. Ultimately, you just wanna make sure that your entire bottom support of your shower base is touching a level floor. Yeah, this is super, super important because if it's not level and flat, you could have some gapping underneath the shower base, which could cause some stability issues, and we definitely don't want that. So if things are a little bit out of level, you can always use like a mortar bed or some leveling compound to make sure you get a nice solid base. However, we probably recommend contracting a professional for that. Uh, the important thing is just making sure that you give it plenty of time to dry before moving on to the next step. In this case, we look pretty solid and level, so I think we're ready to move on. Yeah. Okay, so we removed a tub from our alcove, so we had to adjust our plumbing to fit our shower base. I do wanna point out our drain pipe here needs to be an inch and three quarters above the subfloor. Make sure to check your instruction manual at home if you're installing a different base to check what yours needs to be. Now the second important thing to keep in mind is we wanna make sure we're getting the drain in the correct location for our shower base. Now the easiest way to do this is to dry fit your shower base into your alcove and then trace down through the drain hole onto the subfloor to see exactly where it's gonna fall. So to do that, I'm going to dry fit this down into our alcove like so. All right, and once you've got it in here, you wanna make sure that you're pushing it tight to the back wall into your corners and making sure that everything looks nice and tight. We're also gonna to check to make sure this is level. So Hannah's got the level here. Yep, I'm gonna check the front here. It's important to check not only along the front, but also the sides and along the back to make sure all four corners are level. That looks good, I'm gonna set the level here on the deck. Mike, can you see that? That looks good from here. Okay, perfect. All right, the back looks perfect. Move on to the last side here. And that's great as well. Yep. 
Okay, so now that I've verified that my shower pan is totally level and it's exactly where I want it, this is when I can take my pencil and trace down to the inside of the drain hole down to the subfloor to make sure you're getting that plumbing located in the exact right spot. Now you can see here, ours is looking pretty good. However, if you need to make some adjustments to yours, we probably recommend contracting a plumber uh, just to make sure you're not only getting it in the right location, but also the right distance off that subfloor. Now, before we pull this back out of our alcove, there's a couple more marks that we can make that's gonna help out in some steps down the road. The first is we're gonna need to be drilling some pilot holes through our flange at each of these stud locations to hold the base in place. Now, to make these marks, I'm basically just gonna to try to get my mark not only in the center of the flange from the bottom to the top of the flange, but also in the center of the stud from side to side. So I'm gonna just eyeball exactly where it looks like the center, not only up and down, but also side to side, and then make a pencil mark. Now, Hannah and I are gonna complete the same marks all the way around at each of our stud locations. You'll also notice that towards the front here, we added a little bit of additional framing to give us a spot for one more hole right at the edge of the flange here. But when I did that framing, we wanted to make sure that we also kept in mind what frame was gonna be necessary for our wall set. So we kept that a little bit low to make sure it wasn't gonna interfere with anything down the road. Okay, let's go ahead and make those marks. Okay. Okay, now that we have all of our holes marked, there's one more mark we wanna make before we pull our shower base out. We're gonna take our pencils and draw a line right here on the subfloor across the front of our shower base. All right, that's gonna be a handy reference in a couple of steps. Now that we've got that drawn, let's pull it out and move on. All right, so we have our shower base totally pulled out of our alcove, and now it's time to drill our pilot holes that we previously marked all the way around the flange. Now, I always like pulling the shower base totally out of the alcove because we don't wanna drill into the studs as we do this step. Next, you'll notice that I have a 3 16 inch drill bit attached to my drill with an extended bit on it as well. And I like using an extended bit because as I drill these holes, it gives me a little bit more leeway to make sure that the chuck of my drill isn't gonna damage the finish of my shower base at all. Once I've got that all set up, I just have to move around and drill out all my pencil marks. All right, I'm gonna repeat the same steps for all the holes around the edge of the flange, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, now that we have our holes drilled in our flange, we're gonna move on to focusing on our drain. We're gonna install it according to the manufacturer's instructions, making sure we get it in the right place and also the right height. And we think it's a good idea just to verify that it is exactly in the right place before you glue it all together. And so we dry fit everything in there together. We're gonna place our shower base into our alcove one last time, just verify everything looks good, and they'll be ready to move on. Okay. All right. That drain position looks perfect, so now we're gonna pull our shower base out one last time, finish gluing up all our plumbing connections, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, now that we have our drain installed, it's time to put our shower base in for good. So I have some adhesive here, I've already cut it open. I'm gonna apply it to our subfloor, and Mike's gonna go behind me with a notch trowel and spread it out. Before you put any adhesive down on your subfloor though, make sure it's clean of any debris. And the goal here is as you're using the trowel is spreading the adhesive nice and evenly all over the alcove. However, I do wanna point out, keep an eye on that pencil line that we drew a couple steps ago. We wanna make sure we're keeping all the adhesive behind that line. All right, let's do it. All right, we have our adhesive down and all spread out, so now it's time to put in our shower base. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna check to make sure we're still level. Looks perfect. Okay. Check to make sure you're still level on all four sides, then we're gonna move on to securing the flange to the wall studs. All right, now that we have our shower base in place, the first thing I wanna do is to put down some cardboard because this will not only help protect the surface of my shower base, but also make sure I don't drop anything down the drain. We're gonna be screwing in 
the flange into our studs. And I wanna talk about a couple things before we start doing this. The first is the screws we wanna use. Now these are inch and a quarter long screws and it's important that they're either round or pan head. You don't wanna use a flat head screw because a round or pan head screw has a flat bottom at the top of the threads. Whereas a flat head screw would have a little bit of a bevel coming down to the threaded shaft there. And with that little bevel, as you're securing up the flange, it could cause some damage. So again, be sure you're using either a round or a pan head screw. Secondly, you'll notice my drill has a drill bit extender on it. Again, I think it's just extra helpful to make sure I'm not gonna cause any damage to my shower base as I'm securing these screws through the flange. Finally, I wanna take a look as I'm going around at each of my stud locations to see if I have a gap between the flange and my stud wall. Now, anytime I have a gap of over about an eighth of an inch or more, I wanna make sure I'm using some shims to close that gap because as the screw tightens, I don't wanna cause any damage to my flange. So you can see with my first one here, I do have a little bit of a gap, so I'm gonna use couple shims just to tighten things up. Once I have those in place, I can start my screw. And I find it's helpful to hold the shim with one hand as you tighten the screw with the other. And on these screws, I don't need to over tighten them, just snug them up to make sure everything stays in place. Once I've got it there, I can either break my shim off or if I want a little bit of a cleaner look, I can use a utility knife to make a score line. And then Snap it off just like so. I'm gonna repeat the same steps for every stud location around the rest of my shower base and my flanges, and then we'll be ready to move on. All right, we've got all those screws secured. Now we just need to pull our cardboard out, finish up with our drain, and that about wraps things up. Okay, now it's time to finish installing our drain. Now my drain came with a gasket. If yours did not, you'll either need to use acrylic or latex caulk. Whatever you do, don't use plumber's putty because that could damage the surface of your shower base. Okay, so I'm gonna take that gasket, put it on the bottom of my drain here, and then I'm gonna screw this into place until it's tight. You can kind of put your hand in the middle of it if you need to tighten it a little bit more. Okay, now I'm gonna take my drain cover here and just snap this into place. Okay, that's it. All right, this looks great. Yeah, just be sure to allow those adhesives and sealants time to cure according to the manufacturer's instructions. So if you were only installing the shower base here, then I hope you love it and thanks for allowing us to help. Now once you finish your walls, be sure to add a bead of sealant along the edges of the shower base even along the floor and along the sides. Now, if you're ready to move on to installing the Highcroft shower wall surround, we've got a video to walk you through that as well, so be sure to check it out. Of course, if you have any questions about this install or need any other help, you can always reach out to Delta Customer Service.